This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Today's show is being brought to you by Crawford's Barbecue Pit Products. Check out all their awesome barbecue products over at CrawfordsBBQ.com. Today's best moment show comes from March the 9th in 2010. Dutch oven cooking expert Forrest Dilmore is in. A lot of information here. I'm a big fan of Dutch oven cooking, and there's a lot of great information to get you started down that road right here. Let's get to it. Here's Greg and Forrest from March 9th, 2010. Look, if you don't want to talk to me, buddy, you just don't have to hang up on me. Hey, hey, where did you go? <laughs> you just hung up on me. Ah, uh, the magic of space and the internet, I believe, my friend. Ain't it, though? All right, so we were I'm just... Glad you got, I'm glad you got me back. Yeah, we were just uh, getting ready to transition over into the, the Dutch oven thing, and I was saying, you know, like a lot of people see it on the periphery, but I don't really have a source, an expert source to go talk to about it. I mean, how are you introduced into the world of Dutch oven cooking? Me and my boss was talking one day, and he, uh, he at one time, he was highly involved in scouts. And he talked about this guy that, uh, that would come along on some of their scout outings, from time to time, and he'd bring a Dutch oven, and he'd cook peach cobbler. Well, at this point, I had never even seen anybody, no picture or any anything of somebody cooking on a Dutch oven, but it intrigued me, and so I had to have one. I went and got me one. I cooked, I cooked me a peach cobbler with a simple recipe. It was so sweet I couldn't eat it. I had to throw it out. So I tried another one, and I, you know, and I got better. And then I got to experimenting with other cobblers and other flavors, and it went from that one Dutch oven to uh, well over 100 now. 100 Dutch and ovens? I'll, yeah, 100 plus. Oh, now. crap. Now, uh, where, do you, where do you score a Dutch oven at? I mean, you get that at Target, or you have to go to a specialty store, or where, you know, where do you hook up with those? Well, uh, you, can, you can get a Dutch oven uh, uh, from some department stores like Walmart once in a while in the sporting goods, you might run across the Dutch oven, uh, Cabela's, uh, Bass Pro, any of your outdoor stores, Gander Mountain, uh, order, you can order them direct from Lodge, Camp Shelf. I mean, in your estimation, kind of breaking it down a little bit, not to get too intricate, but I mean, what makes or, or what separates a good Dutch oven from a bad Dutch oven? Uh, a completely like a complete novice uh if i want to go out and buy one over the weekend if i'm picking one up i mean how is it going to say this kind of sucks and this one really rocks i mean how would i be able to tell by picking one up if if one is quality or not is it is it name brand really uh yeah pretty much name brand uh you know it, it, a novice you know it, uh uh people that people that are new at it you know I, they they ask me well what should i get you know i, I always you know, not not that I not that I sell the lodge product or or that I'm endorsing the lodge product, but the lodge product is you know it's American made and it's a good product and it's a good casting of steel of uh of a good casting of cast iron and uh you know it it retains heat better than a lot of other brands uh it's more uniform in cooking and it's a it's a good starter you know if if you know how to control heat you know like somebody an experienced Dutch oven cook that can control heat, you know, I can, I can cook on any of them. I can cook on the imports, you know, that, uh, that don't cook as well. And, uh, and you know, with, with fairly good success, but somebody starting, they, they going, they going to burn everything. All right. So how do you, how, how do you use a Dutch oven? What's the, what's the firing source? How do you heat it up and how are you cooking in it? Well, you, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, you know, a Dutch oven is basically a, a, a cooking vessel. And I tell lots of people, you know, and I, I do classes from time to time, and one of the first things I tell people when I put on the class is if you can cook it in a microwave or a toaster oven or, or a convection oven or, or on the stove, uh, you know, or anywhere, if you can cook it anywhere, you can cook it in a Dutch oven. Uh, it's All it is, it's a, it's a different... A different form of heating vessel. Uh, 
you can use you can use wood or charcoal. I I prefer charcoal because it's more uniform. Uh, and I, matter of fact, I use hardwood lump uh, briquettes because I get more BTUs out of them. I get a I get a longer burn, and I get a more uniform uh, a more uniform heat. And I, I use that for a, for a source of heat on of course on the bottom and on the top. Which of course it, it depends on what you're doing. You know, if if you're frying, you don't need any heat on the top. But if you're baking, you need some heat, a little bit of heat on the bottom and a little bit more heat on the top. So how are you setting it up? Do you put it in a, like a Weber kettle grill and, and stage the charcoal there? Do you need to like dig out a fire pit willy in your backyard? What's the what's the deal on that? Well, per, pretty much pretty much any any way that you know, any anything that you might have. You know, it depends on your surroundings. I actually have Dutch oven tables that I built. That are uh, all steel tables, uh, you know, plate steel uh, with legs. They stand uh, about 18 inches in height, you know, which is a re- a very short table, especially for a guy that's six <laughs> two. Uh, but when you, by the time I put a by the time I put a Dutch oven on the table, and I've got a lid lifter in my hand, I don't have to bend over a whole lot to. Uh, to, to work that pot. I mean, does every pot get the same amount of charcoal and you have to gauge time as far as how things are cooking or how, how do you go about that? Product? That seems to be like the, the the main hinge point of the whole deal is how much charcoal you're putting above and below. Well, it, it depends. It depends on different variables. Uh, your, your outside conditions, your, uh, your air temperature, your, your air humidity has a lot to do with it. You're, you know, if you're in wind, you know, you, you're definitely going, you know, because your coals are exposed to all that. But uh, the biggest thing, uh, the biggest variable between pots, different pots, is, uh, you know, that determines how much heat you need is, is the size of the pot. You know, of course, the bigger the size size of pots you, you're working, the uh, the more coals you need. And uh, there's, a, there's several different easy-to-use formulas you know, for for novice people to to use to determine that. Say, for instance, a twelve inch Dutch oven. If you're going to be baking in a twelve inch Dutch oven, uh, you take you take twelve, which is the the actual diameter of the pot. It's a it's it's a number twelve. It's got a twelve stamped on the lid. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take that twelve, multiply it by two. You come up twenty four. Right. You take you take one third of that twenty four, which is eight, and you put that on the bottom. And you take two thirds of it, which is approximately sixteen. You know, sixteen, sixteen to eighteen, eight to ten on the bottom, sixteen to eighteen on the top. You know, arrange them in in a in a consistent pattern, and that that generally will will equal plus or minus twenty five degrees of an ambient oven temperature of three hundred fifty degrees. And pretty much anything you're going to be baking or cooking in a Dutch oven, you can do it three hundred fifty degrees. And, and and did you find it that it adds a a depth of taste or a different flavor profile to a let's for instance use the peach cobbler if I was making it in the oven at three hundred and fifty degrees versus making it in a in a Dutch oven at three hundred and fifty degrees is there going to be a, a bigger or a, a a deeper breadth of flavor in the Dutch oven than it would be just in my regular house oven? Well, I, you know, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy on taste out of Dutch ovens. Uh-oh. Uh, I think I think there is. Uh, you know, and I I've I've started the last year or two. I've started using a lot of cast aluminum uh, because I can get that cast aluminum in big in big huge sizes. I got some pots that I'll be using Thursday in that catering that are 29 quarts in volume. You know, th- those pots are made for for cooking for large crowds, and it's hard to handle. It's hard enough to handle a, a cast aluminum one, but take take a cast iron that weighs two thirds two thirds more dry weight. Uh, you know, it's even harder to handle. And there, there's a lot of controversy about about taste in a in a cast aluminum versus case, taste in a cast iron. A lot of people say that it, there's no difference, but uh, I tell you there there is a difference. There's a distinct difference, especially if your cast iron is well seasoned. If it's if it's a pot that's been used a lot, you know those pores, those uh, 
you know, the cast iron is porous, right. those pores opening and closing. Uh, you get you get flavors trapped in there, and those flavors get to meshing. And uh, you know, uh, somebody somebody made a remark several years ago that kind of stuck with me that uh, you know they were they were talking about somebody else talking about cooking in cast iron and and uh, using your 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 grandmother's cast iron and uh, you cooking with your grandmother you know because your grandmother's flavors are are being released out of that porous that porous iron as you as you cook to put in your request for a future show please contact john solberg via email at john j-o-n at the bbq central show.com hey before we get into the second segment let me take a minute to tell you about crawford's barbecue pit spreads pit spreads is all natural and gluten-free Pit Spritz keeps your meat super moist during the cooking process. The peach Pit Spritz adds an amazing sweet peach taste to your barbecue. It's great on all meats and it does exceptionally well on pork. All you need to do is screw the included trigger sprayer onto the 16 ounce bottle and you're ready to go. Get all the details on Crawford's Pit Spritz. Head on over to CrawfordsBBQ.com. Be sure you use the coupon code GREG at checkout. You will save 10% off your entire order. That's Greg, G-R-E-G. Now, would you say that, um, oh, how did, uh, how did I want to word this question properly? Oh, I mean, so you're, you're talking about cast aluminum and then cast iron. Does, mm-hmm. does cast aluminum not have a propensity to warp with heat? It will, it will warp. Uh, but you got to get it up to about twelve hundred degrees. So we're not you know, we're not there I'm, yet. I'm not I'm not talking about cast cast aluminum. Uh, this is thick as a as a Pepsi can. I'm talking about cast, cast aluminum that's uh, half to three quarters inch thick. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it'll take it'll take a lot of heat. It uh, it won't take it won't take as much heat as cast iron will. But uh, if you if you're gonna cook something at 1200 degrees, it's done toasted anyhow. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So if you uh, if you're using, as you said, you know the cat the your grandmother's cast iron, and I, and I actually have a, a pan that's a, one of my uh, grandmother's uh, frying uh, cast iron like frying skillet. Uh-huh. Are you using the a cobbler pan? Do you have a specific one for you know each dish that you're going to make? You just clean it out, and then you know if if you need one that's a certain size, you use that one. Uh, so certain flavors don't come out in certain other things, or is that not necessarily an issue? No, that's not an issue. That's not really an issue. And uh, and mo- most of let me let me clarify one thing. Uh, uh, you mentioned you know cobbler pan. Uh, mo- most of what I most of what I use of you know, of course, I use some. Uh, I use some all of it. I've got Dutch ovens. I've got skillets. I've got you know, uh, uh, pots. You know, uh, that are like wash pots. You know, for making large amounts of stew and stuff like that. But mostly, what I cook on, and and when I when I talk about using using coals on bottom and coals on top, I'm I'm pretty much referring to what's referred to as a camp Dutch oven, right. which which has three legs on it and has a a uh, rimmed lead, yeah, you know, that you can you can pile coals on the lead for heat. And you don't run you, know, you don't run into any trouble with like uh, uh, ashes dumping into the to the food when you're taking the lid off or anything like that. I think I think I have done that one time, <laughs> and uh, I made it a point not to do it anymore. <laughs> is it is it easy to do? I mean, how do you kind of maintain yeah, that it, so you don't? It's, it's, it's it's easy to it's easy to do. Uh, you know, there's different lead lifters on the market. A lot of people use a claw hammer or a pair of channel locks or you know some other kind of pliers. You know, regular hand pliers. But uh, uh, there there's there's tools called lead lifters that are specifically designed and made for uh, lifting the leads off of Dutch ovens. Uh, Lodge makes a lead lifter that uh, that uh, works real good, but you could. You know, if you don't watch what you're doing, you can you can dump a a lid full of coals in your in your pot. Uh, there's a guy out in uh, I think he's out in our, in uh, Arizona that uh, a Mister Mayor that makes a Mayor lead lifter that is uh, that is wonderful. I I've got a 
I've got a dozen or so of his lead lifters that I use. As a matter of fact, it's all I use. Oh. Uh, but uh, you, it's like a vice grip uh, lead lifter. Uh, you you put you put you attach it to the lead and you and you squeeze the handle and right. uh, and you've got total control of that lead. You can <laughs> do anything you want to with it. And uh, I've ne- I've never dumped ashes with a mayor lead lifter. Uh, they're, they're awesome. It's an awesome product. Mister Mayor is to be commended. Well, it's uh, like I'm I'm sitting here partially flabbergasted and partially amazed that it, you know it seems like we've gone into this whole different subculture that I really didn't know anything about, and uh, that obviously like people like yourself, and I'm sure just like there's a subculture for barbecue people, whether it be in the backyard or in uh, the competition arenas. Probably something very similar going on with Dutch oven cooks. I would imagine that there's uh, Dutch oven competitions yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, that, yeah there, there's Dutch oven associations, and they and there's competitions, and there's gatherings. They call them dogs, D-O-Gs, Dutch, o- Dutch oven gathering. I, w- I want to I want to share something kind of ironic with you uh, about you know about outdoor cooking and Dutch ovens. Uh, when I got into competition cooking, I had I had been you know, competition barbecue cooking. I had been cooking on Dutch ovens for a while. Right. And, uh, you know, and I thought Dutch oven cooking and barbecuing was, went hand in hand. I'll, you know, I, I, I done it both. I done both of them. I Dutch oven cooked and I, and I barbecued and I did it and I thought everybody else done it. And, uh, my first exposure to other people with my Dutch oven cooking was matter of fact, Kevin Bevington, home, home BBQ.com. I went to Kevin's class, his, his first his first ever competition barbecue class held mm-hmm. in Dothan, Alabama. Went up there and uh, uh, on Friday night before the class, there were several of us there that uh, that had we had a uh, a uh, everybody brought a dish supper. Right. And uh, I said, well, I I cook a pineapple upside down cake and a brownie. And uh, and I I do it in Dutch oven, and I was I was so scared. I I had cooked brownies before, and uh, chocolate is something that is real that is real delicate in a Dutch oven. You either you either nail it, you cook it perfectly, or you burn it. And every time I had done it up to that point, I had burned it. <laughs> I had burnt the bottom to a point where you know I dump it out. I I'd have to take a knife and and cut off about an inch on the bottom. It was burnt, and the rest of it was fine. Yeah, right. Well, I I was, you know, I was uh, I was scared to death because you know the, these other folks. I I had cooked a couple of competitions, and and uh, some of these other folks I I knew had I knew were more experienced cooks than myself. And like I said, I thought I thought they'd done it too. Uh, people like uh, Green Eggs, you know, Big Green Eggs and Ham, uh, Dan. Uh, uh, Sam Grogan of uh, just for fun, you know mm-hmm. they were they were there. Bubba Q was there. Right. Uh, several people was there, and uh, you know, and I w- I was I felt kind of intimidated as far as the barbecue part, and and as far as the Dutch oven cooking part because I thought they'd done it as well. Well, come to find out, they had never even seen it done. Right. And uh, you know, and I I nailed the I nailed the pineapple upside down cake, and I nailed the. Uh, the the brownie and they were just just amazed and it's almost got to the point where now if i if i show up at a barbecue contest and i and i don't have a dutch (laughs) oven with me i might as well pack my stuff up and go home now have you actually ever competed in a barbecue contest uh and done it dutch oven jones and and not done the smoker yes i have Uh uh matter of fact i have uh uh, last last year uh each year on uh, Labor Day weekend, FBA has a fun cook. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's carried out. You know, the same as a regular contest. You got meat inspection. Uh, you got cooks meeting everything. Uh, just turn in boxes. Just just like a just like a re- regular barbecue contest, but there's no points. Uh, there's no points or anything, and it's a it's a good opportunity to uh, to try new stuff. You can turn in multiple entries. Entries, you know, and have it have it judged by uh, by certified judges and so forth. So uh, it's a good place to try things. And I'd been wanting to do it, and I I wasn't scared of my Dutch oven abilities. I but I 
didn't really want to jeopardize my my FBA points. Right. You know, uh, I was I was having a pretty good run on points, and uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to jeopardize that any. So it it was a perfect opportunity, and I, you know, and I checked I checked with the uh, with the rest of the board to make sure that it was legal, uh, and the reps as well. Uh, you know, as far as I could tell from reading the rules, it was legal. I was just using a different a different vessel. Sure. Uh, same fuel and everything. And so uh, I said, yeah. So uh, so I cooked it. I cooked the whole contest. I cooked chicken ribs, uh, pork and brisket in Dutch ovens. I had people coming up in into my trailer to make sure I didn't have a WSM or something stuck up in there. <laughs> but uh, I had, uh, I think I run 11 Dutch ovens. Uh, you know, I, I had, you know, a couple of them had brisket, uh, uh, two or three of them had, um, uh, pork, a couple of them had ribs, some mm-hmm. had chicken, so forth. I think I had 11 running in total. I carried uh-huh. 13 with me. I, I run all of them at two. Right. Uh, I come in, uh, out of 20 some odd teams, uh, come in, I think it was 13th place chicken, 11th place pork, 5th place brisket, and 2nd place ribs, and come in 7th overall. Wow. All Dutch oven cooking barbecue right there. Yeah. And there it is from March the 9th, 2010, the After Dark segment of the Big Barbecue Central Show. Forrest Dillmore, Dutch oven expert. Forrest also is an amazing FBA cook. He plays around in KCBS as well. Hit the link in the show notes to take you to this complete episode. There's a whole lot more information. Hey, while you're cruising around the internet, stop by CrawfordsBBQ.com. Check out their awesome barbecue pit products. Use the coupon code GREG at checkout, G-R-E-G, for 10% off your entire order. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.